Ryan Blaney talked about his head hurting after Sunday's race at Las Vegas. Maybe it's time for a championship format change. Plus, William Swatch headed to the Xfinity Series full time in 2025. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. We got a few things to talk about today. Ryan Shurex had a bit of a teaser on Monday morning, and some people are like, is he gonna be full-time at Sam Hunt Racing next year? No, he's just doing the Xfinity race at Homestead this weekend for Sam Hunt Racing in that 26 car, but they had an absolutely fantastic Miami Vice style promo uh, to announced that he's doing that race, which was phenomenal. Hopefully he does get a full-time ride in the Xfinity Series next year, but it likely won't be with Joe Gibbs Racing. More on that uh, in a few minutes, but we're going to start off with Ryan Blaney. A lot of people leave Las Vegas with their head hurting, whether that be from a hangover, whether that's from banging your head against the wall for losing too much money at the tables, or maybe even getting sun poisoning when your friends left you on the roof of a hotel. For Ryan Blaney, he leaves Las Vegas with his head hurting because his Ford Mustang absolutely shook it around like a bartender at the Bellagio. But for Blaney, this weekend definitely was not his banner weekend, a weekend that he wants to forget in Las Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And for Blaney, he really hopes that it does, in fact, stay in Vegas. He had a practice crash on Saturday when the rear tire blew out in his car, and he smacked the wall really hard, square on the driver's side, which certainly didn't feel very good. And then on Sunday, as he's trying to avoid a sliding Brad Keselowski, who got caught up in that Chase Elliott Tyler Reddick uh, incident, he goes up and smacks the wall, gets toe link damage, gets suspension damage, and he's driving back to pit road it's shaking his brains back and forth and ultimately end up leading to a headache now after the race he said quote my head was killing me when we broke the right rear toe link flopping all around in there me trying to get back to pit road and you just get to freaking basketball back and forth back and forth on the headrest i was fine until the end and my head started to kill me again it helped me a little bit but a long day so he was answering a question about um him requesting advil during the race and yeah i mean as tight as those headrests are your head still moves back around a little bit back and forth and you kind of pinball and his brain inside is going back and forth. But when a lot of fans saw that, heard him talking about that, they immediately were like, he has a concussion. He has a concussion. He doesn't. See, here's the thing. I get it. The Gen 7 car and head injuries, that's a big talking point, right? The Gen 7 car has caused head injuries. It did take people out. NASCAR has made really, really good improvements to the safety of this car. And yeah, can you still get a concussion? Surely. You absolutely can. But in this instance, I don't think that is the case. Because after his practice crash on Saturday, he had to be checked out by uh, the doctors. Cleared that clearly. And then on the race on Sunday... A lot of times when you just bounce your head back and forth, you're going to get a headache. I mean, I'm sure people that go to metal concerts get headaches. I wouldn't know. I'm not out there head banging back and forth. But think about it. If I ride around on my zero turn cutting all 397 acres that I have, yeah, my head hurts after a while. And same thing probably happened with Ryan Blaney here. It's unfortunate because people immediately want to jump to that. But I think Blaney deserves the benefit of the doubt. I'm sure if something major was happening, he would have alerted somebody at that point um, because it's not worth it. I think we all understand head injuries at this point and, you know, know that the long term effects are are, you know, really impactful for your quality of life versus, you know, maybe taking yourself out of a race or something like that. And I think a lot of people now understand the impacts that head injuries can have. So for Ryan Blaney, yeah, he complained about it. Yes, he asked for Advil. No, I don't think we should just immediately jump to the conclusion that he has a concussion or a head injury or something like that. I very much think that this is just an instance of a guy getting a headache because he was just being bounced around inside the race car trying to get it back to pit lane. NASCAR needs to shake up the playoff format. The eighth-seated driver, technically ninth-seated driver, and Joey Logano has now locked himself into the championship race at Phoenix. And this isn't a knock on Joey Logano. Don't hate the player, hate the game, hate the format in this situation. Logano get, went out there and did exactly what the format says. If you win, you're in. And guess what? He's now in because of his win in Las Vegas. But I think the championship format needs a bit of a tweaking. The one-race championship format just isn't getting it done. It needs to be tweaked. It hasn't given us any of those Game 7 moments moments that NASCAR has talked about wanting to have out of the championship race. I mean, heck, hasn't even given us a game three of the ALCS this year between the Cleveland Guardians and New York Yankees type of moment. It certainly hasn't given us a game six Kirby Puckett walk off to win the World Series type of moment, moment for the Minnesota Twins. So here I am once again to ask for a three race championship round, not just one race, but three races. Whoever has the most points at the end of that wins. Now, I know some of people are going to sit back and be like, Matt, what about the playoff format? Are we going to just 
reduce the regular season to 24 races? Are we going to add two extra races onto the season and take it up to 38? No, absolutely not. You stick with 26 regular season races. You stick with 36 races overall. My idea here is to create a wild card race. The first race of the playoffs is now the wild card race. At the end of that race, four drivers go home. Sorry, it's unfortunate, but for the most part, it should protect your championship favorites, unless you're Justin Allgaier, which in that case, that would be unfortunate, but you're not likely going to lose all of those points in one race. And for the most part, it will likely eliminate the four, uh, you know, weakest drivers that made the playoffs. From there, you have your uh, three race round of 12. You eliminate four more drivers, your three race round of eight. You eliminate four more drivers until you have your championship three race round with your four remaining drivers, whoever has the most points at the end of that wins. I think that's probably the fairest way to do it. I think that's a good compromise. We're never getting rid of the playoff elimination format. We're just not doing that. So it's not worth talking about going back to a full regular season championship as much as myself and others uh, would probably like to see that happen. The elimination format is here to stay. Fine. I can accept that. However, I think we should change it just for the sake of not having a one race winner takes all type of format. Have an intermediate, have a short track or whatever you consider uh, Phoenix to be, and then either add a road course in or another type of oval. But having just one race at Phoenix decide the championship just has not produced the results, has not produced the excitement, it hasn't produced the ratings, if we're being frank, about, you know, this race being the championship race. So I think having a three race round would certainly make it more intriguing and it creates storylines for that championship battle. Not only are you just stuck with one race at Phoenix, but if you have th two races leading up to that final race, and yeah, maybe one guy is so far out, he can't do it. Fine, great, you're down to just three drivers. But if you have a good championship battle between one or two drivers there, then it becomes pretty interesting. I know, I know, right now with the championship race, you know with your four championship drivers, whoever finishes um, ahead of the others wins the title. I get it, that's simple, it's easy to understand, but it doesn't really create the storylines I think that we could get out of a three race format. So I would really like to see that. I'm interested to hear what other people think about it. And finally, on Monday, Joe Gibbs Racing made it officially official that William Sawalich would move up to the NASCAR Xfinity Series full-time in 2025, driving the number 18 car. This has been a deal that's pretty much been in the works for the last two seasons. He went over to Joe Gibbs Racing on the ARCA side of things, you know, recorded 16 ARCA total wins, two East Championships. That has been really stout over there, which he shouldn't be. It's a Joe Gibbs Racing car in the ARCA Series. However, his kryptonite continues to be Connor Zilich, who he'll have to deal with again in 2025. 2025 in the Xfinity series, but William Swalich kind of entered in the ARCA series high on people's prospects list, and he's still high on some people's list. Personally, on the break hard top 10 prospect list, he's not even in the top five, and I don't think he was in the top seven when I broke it all down. But for William Swalich, Talented kid, sure, but I think that the level of equipment in the ARCA series masks his deficiency that he currently has as a driver. And he's young, right? He's 17, just turned 18. He'll be making his Xfinity Series debut this upcoming weekend at Homestead driving for Joe Gibbs Racing. But in his select starts in the truck series in Tricon Garage equipment in that number one truck, he has looked mediocre at best. In seven starts this season, he has no top fives, no top tens. He has an average start of 11.7 and an average finish of 19. So you're talking about a net loss of seven positions there. That isn't ideal at all. Compare that to his six starts last year, where he did get three top 10 finishes for Tricon. In the truck series, his average start was 10.7 and his average finish was 18. So you're talking about a seven point net loss there, or net position loss as well. For Sawalch, maybe the Xfinity car will suit his driving style better. I know people on the internet will be like, well, the Tricon number one truck hasn't performed uh, that well in a long time, like the better part of two years. And it's like, well, kind of the guys that keep rolling through there. But like Brendan Queen ha didn't have an issue driving that truck earlier this year at North Wilkesboro. And we've seen others get in that truck and be competitive. But for Sawalich, I don't know. It just feels like something is missing there. And maybe it's just because he's young. Maybe it's just because he hasn't got a grasp on the car yet. But I do question him going into the Xfinity Series next year and wondering if he's going to match up to the talent level that is currently in the Xfinity Series. The Joe Gibbs Racing lineup next year for Xfinity is one of the more mid lineups they've ever rolled out there. You have Brandon Jones, who is a multi-race winner in the Xfinity Series. I'll give him that, but he hasn't done much of merit in the last couple of years or much to remember. And then you toss in William Swalch here, who hasn't made an Xfinity Series start yet, so we have to reserve judgment on his Xfinity record uh, for the moment. 
And then you also throw in Tanner Gray or Taylor Gray. Sorry, I don't want to get the Grays messed up there. But Taylor Gray, who doesn't have a truck series win and doesn't have an Xfinity series win. And it's like, OK, I'm not I know why all of this is laid out the way that it is. I mean, if we're just being honest here, buying rides is what's happening over at Joe Gibbs Racing. And I don't think that should come as a shock to anybody. They're kind of running their Xfinity program a lot like how Junior Motorsports runs theirs, uh, where guys bring budgets and then they build the team around that. But yeah, this isn't one of the stronger lineups that we've seen from Joe Gibbs Racing like we've seen in years past. I expect that fourth car to still be a rotating all-star car. Uh, but man, it just, yeah, they got a lot to prove next year, I think is where they're kind of at. So yeah, Swatch, full-time next year in the Xfinity Series for Joe Gibbs Racing, uh, Stark, Starkly, the hearing aid company or ear protection company will be the sponsor that was started by his grandfather. His parents run it. Now he will have that as the sponsor of his NASCAR Xfinity series car next year. I also noticed that they sponsor a lot of TRD stuff. They are on um, midgets. Now they're on some of the lower level stuff. So uh, good for them. If they got the money to spend anytime we get new sponsors into the sport, certainly not a bad thing at all. So let me know in the comments what you think about Blaney saying that his head hurt. My idea for the championship format and William Swatch going full time next season in Xfinity. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.